Now yesterday I was talking to you about how there are many things that money answers for. But there are certain things only the healing, anointing oil of God is the answer. Can I have an amen? And today we see churches are full of sick people. And we have the teaching on healing. But the anointing oil has not been respected or celebrated. And so it has not been flowing upon the church of God as it should. Believe me, when you read the book of Acts, you will see mention of certain things there. But everything that you will see there is clubbed under one word. And you can write down that word. A notable miracle. Are you listening to me? A notable miracle. We need notable miracles once again happening in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When there is a notable miracle, the mouths of the critics are shut. The slanderers keep quiet. They are put to shame. They have nothing to talk about. Because the church is in the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's high time the church understood that the church is coming to a place of preparation. Where the bride is being prepared to meet with the groom who is to come. Hallelujah. And unless there is this openness in the hearts of people, unless there is this Revelation in the minds of people. Like I told you, comes December 31st, 2024, it will be no different from the years gone by. There won't be any change. No transformation, no miracle, nothing special, nothing to talk about, nothing to praise God about. It's pathetic. Because we claim to have a savior, a redeemer, the miracle worker. Like we have heard beautifully sung, way maker. Are you listening? Are you listening? Nobody goes by the title way maker if they don't make ways. I didn't hear you. Your Jesus is a way maker. And if he is a way maker, then he will make the way for you to see and experience the unexpected. Hallelujah. And today I'm going to talk to you about the recovery of breath that is coming upon the church. Hallelujah. From the effects of the heat that people have gone through. And fresh air is going to come from the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of you are wondering from what I'm quoting from. And I'm going to read to you from Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Amplified Bible. So right close to where you're writing your notes, Amplified Bible. So repent. Change your mind and purpose. Turn around and return to God that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. The times of refreshing, of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air may come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you that prayer will be an important part of this recovery of breath. And yesterday we learned about one missed moment of prayer. One failed 
time of prayer caused Peter to deny Jesus thrice. And it didn't happen over a period of six weeks. In hours. In just a matter of a few minutes. He was denying, denying and swearing and denying. He had nothing to do with Jesus. And believe me. When you don't have a strong prayer time. You will end up with that same miserable condition. You will not be able to withstand the opposition of the enemy. And please listen very carefully. The world is not going to become easier to live in. Thank you for that amen brother. The world is not going to be easier. But God is looking for men and women. Who will be able to take their stand. And like we see. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 19, 9 to 14, like we read yesterday. All the disciples were full of unbelief. They didn't have any kind of faith in them. Even when they saw credible witnesses. And that's what I asked you to write. I said, even when they saw credible witnesses, they wouldn't believe those credible witnesses. Who saw Jesus as risen Lord. And finally. I told you. That in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. There was a suddenly that took place. And with that suddenly that took place. Came an immediately. That also took place. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 3. That's why I come with a highlighter. Highlight it in your Bible. Because often we see Christians giving explanations for God. Don't give an explanation and an excuse for the Savior. He is bigger than you. He is way maker. Are you listening? Don't give excuses. Don't try to reason out things. That's the problem in the present church. We have a lot of logical thinkers. They can think their way so clearly that they will come to a place where they will deny the power of God and coolly start giving explanations for why that power is not necessary. Don't come to that place. I said don't come to that place. And today, we're going to see something about the operations of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, let's go to Acts chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. Are you listening? They were not scattered. They were all in one place. And I want to bring this to your attention. And I want you to write this down, please. The Bible itself tells us there were more than 500 who saw Jesus after his resurrection. Where were the rest? I didn't hear you. Where were the rest? Only 120 were together. Paul writes about it. He said there were more than 500 people who saw him. A great many have passed on. But some of you, some of them who are there are still alive. Have you ever asked that question? Where were the rest? Remember, there's always this 
guilt that the church is guilty of and that is limiting God. And when men limit God, they never receive the blessing of expecting the unexpected to happen from the one who's called way maker. Hallelujah. And I want you to write this down. The Bible says, repent. That's what we read in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. And I promised I would come to that place. Amen. I just read it out the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. But today I'm going to talk about the word repent. Not only is there a change of mind and purpose, but there must come a brokenness. And I want you to write that word, brokenness. And I have six things that I've written down here to highlight what brokenness will do. It takes broken soil to produce a crop. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Break up your fallow grounds. As long as the ground and the soil remains unbroken, it will not produce a crop. Number two. It takes broken clouds to give rain. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3. It takes broken clouds to give rain. Number three. It takes broken grain to give bread. Oh, Malaharia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brokenness is not a bad word. When it is clubbed together with the word repentance. Some of you act like you're repented. But you don't know what brokenness does. Brokenness will take you to a different dimension of living. You can make out whether a man is play acting with the word repentance and repent. Or if the fruit of repentance has begun to manifest in the man's life. Number four. It takes broken bread to give strength. That's why the Bible says the early church met with people's houses and broke bread. And the church began to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number five. It takes a broken alabaster box to give forth perfume. You look at the woman who came and broke the alabaster box of ointment on Jesus and poured it on him. The entire house Forgot about the meal. I didn't hear you. Food gives out smell. But the perfume from the alabaster box was overpowering. Overwhelming. No wonder Jesus said wherever the gospel is preached. What this woman has done will be said. And 2023, December 30. At Christ Chapel is no different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of brokenness are you talking about? Don't act in the church. Because there are a lot of actors in the church. They should have Oscar awards here in the church. They can act. 
When you take a look at them somewhere else, they're completely different, different characters. And they talk about brokenness. They don't know what brokenness does. Brokenness, brokenness will transform you. Brokenness will lead you to a new dimension of living. You will leave the present level that you are in and move to a different level. And if you are wise, you will say Amen. Amen. Some of you are waiting for 2024. Enter the year the right way. Amen. Amen. And number six. This is this what we studied yesterday? Or at least we read it from the scriptures. It is Peter weeping bitterly, broken, who returns to greater power than ever on the day of Pentecost. Three times denying, thrice swearing and denying. And then the Bible tells us he remembered what Jesus said and he wept bitterly and he moved out from where? Sitting around the fire. Are you listening? Today we are sitting around the fire but we don't have the fire in us. Today a lot of people are sitting warming themselves by the fire. They love the fire. It's warm there. Peter left that place. I didn't hear you. That is symbolic of what would happen on the day of Pentecost. When he would be filled with the Holy Ghost and stand. Now not warmed by the fire outside. But the fire is now resting upon him. The fire of the Holy Ghost. What do you want is the question. Some of you want just ordinary lives. Just the name Christian. It's good enough for me. You don't know. You will be held accountable for every single day gone by which has been unfruitful. And today we're going to talk about why the church limits God. And I want you to understand as you read Psalm 78. Come with me to Psalm 78. Because this is the message that God gave me this morning. To come and pr bring before you. Psalm 78. Verses. 40. And 41. Write down all the scripture portions. Write it down. Mark it in your Bible. If it's a warning, right close to that place, warning. I shouldn't be found doing the same thing the Bible is warning me about. Psalm 78 verse 40 and 41. How often they defied and rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. And time and again they turned back and tempted God provoking and incensing the Holy One of Israel. The King James Version will say yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't be ever found limiting the God of Israel. I already spoke about it the first two days. Petty mindedness. Small mindedness. Can result in you limiting God. Don't sit and claim and say I was taught this. Remember the revelation that we have today is far far greater. Please listen. And I say this with all humility. Then the revelation that D.L. Moody had. Then the revelation that Charles Spurgeon had. I he hear you. Amen. Then the revelation that Charles Finney had. And yet, they evidence more 
of the power of God than the church today. Because the church today is limiting God. We have the revelation. We have the teaching. But we say we don't believe. As simple as that. I don't believe. That's how we start our conversation. And there's some others who will say from my experience. How old are you is the question. He's called the ancient of days. How old are you? How old are you? Even the, if that miracle has never happened before. Don't limit God from doing the unexpected in your life. He will do it. It's never happened before. Doesn't matter. There's no reason why it won't happen. Again. When God will do something to bring his glory. Into play. Remember. Before the Red Sea was parted. The Red Sea was never parted. And he hear you. The Jordan was known for overflowing its banks. Not for giving way on dry ground for people to pass through. I have seen the river Jordan. And so have some of you who have visited Israel. Amen. Amen. Muddy place. And yet the water will be flowing. There's not a bit of place where it's going to be dry. And yet it happened. God did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which brings us to the fact that even if something has never happened before, they say, we have no evidence of anyone being healed of this. He can still heal. Hallelujah. He can still heal. And I'll shout it out till the end of my days. He can still heal. And he will heal. I'm not a representation of sickness. I represent the kingdom of God. When God called me, he didn't call me to represent sickness and disease. He called me to represent the kingdom of God. Know who's your God. And the only way you can know him is to be deeply grounded and rooted in this word. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you a couple of things that constitute God doing the unexpected. Come with me, please, to a few of these scripture portions. They're all familiar. But often we don't look at it like we should look at it. And that's what makes all the difference. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Highlight that in the Bible. You have a Bible with you? Highlight it. What did they come to hear? What did they come to hear? The word of God. Which word would Jesus speak about is the question. Certainly he would have the word of the kingdom of God with him. Amen. Amen. And he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now we have always taught about this in the context of sowing reaping. But today I want to talk to you about expecting the unexpected. Amen. Amen. There are many things you can talk from the scriptures. But today it's about expecting the unexpected. If you will believe this today 
and start from today. God will surprise you every day. Every day. Can you think of having the unexpected happening in your life by virtue of God trying to surprise you? I don't know whether you know it. Some people say surprise and they stand before you and you're wondering what's the surprise? <laughs> you're not surprised. You're already feeling terrible inside. The person has come. Now next few hours I have to sit and talk. God doesn't do that. When God surprises you, it becomes a notable miracle. For generations they will talk about it. Who even knew of these men? They were ordinary men. Fishermen. Now the thing is, something is going to happen. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Now listen very carefully. The first part of the verse tells us very, very clearly Simon was not expecting anything. And I want you to write it down. The one who was expecting was Jesus. I didn't hear you. Oh, I didn't hear you. Simon was not expecting. He is reluctant to go home. Without a catch, what is he going to tell his wife? I didn't catch anything. I worked all night. She'll look at him straight enough in the face and tongue in cheek tell him, that's why my mother warned me not to get married to you. He's standing there. He's washing the nets. What will he go back with to the home? You must know the life of fishermen. We are getting more and more acquainted with that on the mission field in Tharanga. They don't get a catch. They don't have anything actually to eat with that day. It's only what they have over and above for their homes do they have to give out for others. And I want you to make a note of this please. The one expecting was not Simon. Simon is reluctantly saying, I'll just listen to you because you're asking me, I'm going to do it. He doesn't believe what he's going to see happen. Whereas Jesus is expecting the Father to do the unexpected. And I'm going to show you scripture for that. So if you think I just invented this verse, Don't you ever think that, please. Verse 5. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. Are you listening? We talk about Net breaking, boat sinking, miracles. But that was not what Simon believed for. It was Jesus who believed for it. And no one ever taught us this. I, are you listening? No one taught us this. We always thought Simon was being rewarded for the nets he put down. No, it was Jesus who was rewarded for his faith in his father's provision. So whether it's in season or out of season, God will provide. Are you listening? Are you listening? It was in the time. It was in the hour to go fishing. Yet, the one who is the creator of all things. I want an amen. 
the way maker. I said the way maker. When he begins to operate, all things will obey him. You can imagine the fish getting confusing signals. They thought they escaped. They tricked Peter in the night. Now there's a command that's coming forth. Go forth and fall into his net. They never heard it. But it's coming from the one who believed the impossible will take place. Today I'm talking to you. Believe for the impossible. Don't sit and listen to all these stupid people who don't read the word. No idea about God. Never seen a miracle happen. They sit and talk to you about miracles. What do they know about miracles? Listen to the ones who have seen miracles. Listen to the ones who have had a net breaking, boat sinking return. And they beckoned unto their partners. Which were in the other ship. That they should come and help them. And they came. And filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Are you listening? Don't limit God. I said don't limit God. They began to sink. Now listen, they are sinking. Why? Because of an unexpected miracle. That's a good way to sink. I didn't hear you. Better to sink with a notable miracle... Than to sink with no miracle. Are you listening? They're sinking because of a miracle. Unexpected grace. Unexpected favor. Unexpected return. Write down these words. This is only 20, 24 to you. This is not a sermon. Maybe you're not used to the way I'm preaching. Most of it is prophetic. It'll come to pass. Amen. It'll come to pass. Amen. Believe me, it'll come to pass. Amen. I don't come here with anything else in my heart except God's word. Amen. That's why I don't talk much about experience itself. If I have to write about experiences, the books and books, volumes and volumes I can write. That won't help anybody. But the word of God will help you. Amen. The word of God will prosper you. The word of God will heal you. Amen. And look at this verse. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it. Now we can be very sure. He didn't expect this. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying. Depart from me. Why? Because the fishermen. Didn't get the fish. It was the carpenter who made boats who got the fish. And he's getting more confused. Depart from me. Leave me. For I am a sinful man. Brokenness. Brokenness. Oh Lord. Leave me. For he was astonished. And all that were with him. At the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Amen. Read it as many times as possible. And say, God, I believe in the God of unexpected miracles who will surprise me. Amen. I see it in Jesus the Bible says I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And the wisdom of God is formed within me. Philippians, let this mind be in you even which was in Christ Jesus. That means I can let my mind be renewed with God's word. That God is a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He'll make a way for me through any kind of situation that looked hopeless. Hopeless. Now if you want another example. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come with me to John chapter 11. 
the raising of Lazarus from the dead. John 11. We're going to read from verses 37 onwards. And today the entire emphasis on Jesus. Are you listening? The entire emphasis is on Jesus. Jesus is the one who expected the unexpected. And as his children, we are taught to follow his footsteps. Amen. John 11, 37 onwards. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? I wanted to highlight that phrase. They were not believing that he could be raised from the dead. They were saying if he could bring the blind, their sight back, couldn't he have stopped this man from dying? Are you listening? That means these are not expecting the unexpected. The only one who had complete confidence in the Father is Jesus. Amen. And we are learning from him. And the Holy Spirit is here, is making him the center of this message. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when Jesus heard these people and what they were saying, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself come to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Now I want you to highlight the word Martha. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, let's see what was her expectation. Lord, by this time he stinketh. Her expectation is stench. Mark it. Learn it. Because we are looking at the one who can believe for the unexpected and God will not disappoint. God will not disappoint. She is saying what she is expecting to sense. The moment the stone is removed, there will be stench. He stinketh. For he had been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. This is the thing that we are talking about. The glory. The glory. The weightiness of the presence of God. If you want to know it, you got to see it. But to see it, you got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, write it like the way it is written there. If you believe... You will see. Not I will see and believe. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said. Listen. He didn't put his fingers to his nose. He was not expecting the stench. He was expecting the unexpected. And this is something you must learn. Body language, it's there. What did he do? He lifted up his eyes. He didn't close his nose. Are you listening? Are you listening? What you believe in is what you will act out. What you act out is what is actually what you're believing. And he lifted up his eyes. And said, Father, Abba, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew. Are you listening? And I knew. That means every moment of the day, his awareness is, God is listening to me. 
and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Hallelujah. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about him with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Are you listening? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And that's why we are standing here to declare that God will surprise you with the unexpected. If you have your Bibles now, I'm going to show you the verse. How many of you are going to get surprised with the unexpected verse? I didn't hear you. It's found in the book of Job. And it was spoken by a man called Eliphaz the Temanite. Now you must understand that the friends of Job who were sent to comfort Job ended up talking a lot of things. I want you to write this down. A little background you must know. Not everything that they said was wrong. I want you to write it down. Not everything that they said was wrong. Where they made a mistake was, they assumed Job was a sinner, God was punishing him, and because of that, all these things had come upon him. They failed to realize that Job was a righteous man. And it was not God, it was Satan. So finally, in Job chapter 42, you read about how God telling Eliphaz the Temanite, you spoke a lot of things and you didn't represent me correctly. And he hear you. Therefore, go and ask Job to pray for you. But one statement which Eliphaz the Temanite made is an amazing statement. Not wrong. It's found in Job chapter 5. And I'm going to read to you verse 9. Job chapter 5 and verse 9. Praise you, Jesus. Which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. That means can God bless you 365 days? Yes. If he gave manna, he can do it, no? I didn't hear you. He did it for 40 years, every day. Miracle. Miracle provision. So much so, they were expecting it to fall. Amen. Where you read this verse in the King James Version? And he said, don't see this thing, what you said, pastor, surprise me. Unexpected. Come with me to the Message Bible. The Message Bible. So write close to your notes, Message Bible. Refer the Message Bible. After all, this is Job 5.9. He is famous for great and unexpected acts. There is no end to his surprises. I didn't hear you. No, you're not surprised. You thought you had caught me. You can't corner God. God is bigger than anything we think. He can surprise you. There is no end 
to his surprises. That means his grace of surprising people is endless, eternal, no end. After all, this is how the message Bible reads. He is famous for great and unexpected acts. How many of you believe that you can believe for the unexpected? That's not a proper amen and response. That you will forget even before you climb down the steps. Unexpected. You have to tell it to yourself every day when you get up. Just like you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. God, you will surprise me today. The unexpected will happen because I am expecting like Jesus. I have full confidence in you. I have full confidence in your integrity. I believe your word. I will not just say, oh, that's the message Bible. That's what most people are doing. They lack reverence. And because they lack reverence, they lose the reverence of God in their lives. And they end up slandering God. Limiting God. That's what they did continually in the wilderness. No wonder they died in the wilderness. I want to go to Canaan. I want to enter the promised land. I want to live in the promises of God. I want to eat and to drink what God has planned for me. Amen. That's a decision you take. The decision is yours. Just like your salvation. The decision is yours. If you decide, you will see God surprise you. If you don't, the devil will surprise you. Either one of the two are going to surprise you. Better to throw yourself with God. Yesterday, what did I tell you? David said, don't put me at the mercy of men. It is far better that I throw myself into the mercies of God. Why? Because at one point, even if it's judgment, he will stop. Men won't stop. They'll walk over you. They'll make you nothing. They'll talk low of you. They'll slander you. They'll go from house to house slandering. Some of us have seen that. And we have made it through that fire. And we have come here. And we are standing here. Amen. Believe me. I said believe me. Your God is greater than any problem you have. He is way maker. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 